and welcome to Where Women Talk. I'm Nadia Giordano, and I have a fascinating guest on the show today. Her name is Anul Sattar. She is a young woman with many talents, among them writing poetry, which is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Let's go talk to her and listen to some of her poetry. It's great to have you on the show. I'm so interested to hear a little bit about your life. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a recent graduate from the College of Worcester in Worcester, Ohio. I got a bachelor's degree in English from there and I'm a poet. I love to write poems in different forms, whether it's like villanelles or sonnets, sestinas, haiku. Um, and I love to publish in academic journals. I'm hoping to go to grad school from, for an MFA program. So that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's great. You're a very busy young lady. I was, uh, I, I looked you up and I noticed that you were published in, well, probably about 50 different magazines, but two of my favorites, Poets and Writers, and the American Journal of Poetry wrote a glowing uh, <laughs> review of you and your poetry. So you're in some very good company. Mm -hmm. the, that one, the American Journal of Poetry was the first publication, actually. Um, I was a freshman when it happened at college. So yeah, that was like one of my first poems. Well, then I guess we're very lucky to have you in our latest issue, Wink. This one's going to be coming out this week. That has one of your poems in it. I'm the editor of Wink magazine, in case there's someone out there watching that didn't know that. Right. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to uh, have you maybe read a little something if you have a, a favorite or something handy that you could share with us. Okay, I have a poem that's called Horticulture. Horticulture? Horticulture, yes. And um, it goes like this. Horticulture. When you offered to make me happier than I am, I was elated. For unlike the smooth-skinned nectarine, my outer bark remained unshaven, and my coarse branches beckoned so overgrown for you to work upon. What a fool I was to think that you looked beyond my blemishes as you sawed off my strongest branches so that I might have a healthier canopy. And so well you covered my thin canopy with fine mesh bird netting before the thieving thrushes could bore holes into my bruised fruit, that I doubted my harvest could live without your care. How was I to know they were cultivated only to ease your hunger? Now I regret I was not raised in some other orchid orchard altogether. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. You have a very nice voice too. <laughs> It's like the Elizabeth Taylor look, the poems, all that just like combines. But thank you. <laughs> do you uh, do you perform your poetry sometimes in public readings? Yes, I used to go to Brooklyn Poets, which is a small organization in Brooklyn, New York. Um, that's where I started. I've gone to the Cabrillo College in California to read my poems, and the the Bridgewater College in. Virginia. Um, I've done like the Queens Library in New York, um, the Q, the Cuyahoga Valley Art Center in Ohio, like lots of places. So yes, libraries, colleges, cafes. I like to dress up. <laughs> it makes me happy. So yes, I do. Absolutely. And now where do you live right now? You moved recently, I believe. Yes, um, I was at school in Worcester, Ohio, and then I moved um, to Texas. So I'm like in McKinney, Texas. So right um, now you're in Texas. Right now I'm in Texas, but I'm in like Dallas, Texas. What are some of your plans for the future? Um, I'm planning to gain more work experience um, with children. So like I teach at a preschool, then I also teach kids from like the second grade all the way to like the 11th grade. 
um, just to get a hands-on experience of how to work with kids. And then hopefully I'm thinking of going to a master of fine arts program and like teach undergrads on like creative writing. Um, English is my main focus. I think working with kids on like phonics and things like that, and then going all the way to like SAT English and stuff, it just um, creates a base and it helps me learn how to like teach kids and like what English is all about. And it's just like a step to step way of like teaching older kids. Cause I want to be an adjunct professor it's the dream, so I like might as well. Small steps. <laughs> it's Absolutely. Got to have the dreams. That's what you reach for. You'll get there. I hope. <laughs> do you do other types of writing besides poetry? Do you write uh, essays or short stories? Um, the closest to short stories is probably the prose poem. Um, fiction writing was something maybe I wanted to do, but I just felt like Poetry was much more glamorous. You know, you know a lot of people that are doing poetry out there rather than short stories. I know people that write short stories probably hit me for that, but I don't know. I find poetry to be more glamorous. But yeah, I, I dabble here and there, but yeah, my main genre is poetry. It's short, it's easy, it gets to a lot of people real quick. And it's a, a lot more satisfying in the sense that you start a poem, you can finish it the same day usually. <laughs> And you get that satisfaction of this wonderful work of art that's done so quickly. Whereas if you're writing a novel, it could take a couple of years. Right, yes, and how you expand. I mean, yes, you know, how you expand on that idea and just keep on going, so yes. Do you have a little something else you could read for us? Uh, yeah. Um, let me see, I've got like a whole book of poems. <laughs> you really old poems. Uh, yeah, um, this one is called Trust, and it was published, I think, in the Gray Sparrow Journal many years back, um, Trust. And then there's a little code by Khalil Gibran. So it goes like little code would be between what is said and not meant and what is meant and not said, most love is lost. And then my poem begins. A lonely white tailed wildebeest began to question his decision of asking a timid yellow billed oxpecker to leave her chattering flock and assist him to extract bot flies from his thickened hide. And though the brindled bovine tolerated her on his backside, the zealous bird got carried away and tore open all his wounds to drink from them until she was bloated with his fresh blood. So when she alerted him of a slow approaching poacher, the striped antelope only turned his long narrow ears away. And even then, more blood was spilt from his scorned heart. It's pretty mm -hmm. dark stuff. Mm -hmm. I've read some of your other poetry online and I must say that it is excellent, especially for someone so young. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. I'm like, yeah, I bet you do. I do. I, I Let do. me ask you a question about uh, your attire today. Is there <laughs> a special significance? Can you tell me a little something? Um, I always thought that ac academia is very dry. I feel like they deliberately dress down to show how serious they are. I feel like people that are my age or, you know, my generation, they're fun. So like when you're doing something so serious, you should present it in a fun way which is why I dress up like this. Sometimes my poems uh, are connected to my outfits. Like I'll dress up like, a, I'll have a big swan on my head because there'll be a poem such as courtship about swans. Today I'm dressed up like Cleopatra because I just want to look like a diva and celebrate myself. So it's not connected to a poem, but it just helps with the image. And it's a fresh way of looking at something so serious. You know, it's kind of like, an iPhone, you put in so much work into it, there's like a lot of intricate details, but when you present it, it's so smooth and silky and shiny. So like I put a lot of effort into my poetry, but when I present myself, I want to look fun and easygoing and happy. 
I think that's how I want to do it. Well, it is fun and it's interesting to to look at and watch and it's so much more interesting than let's say an average interview. I was so delighted when you came on screen and just oh no, this girl is fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ta-da. Yes, I try to be. I try to make people happy. Do you have any final words of, of wisdom or some final things that you'd like to say? Um, I would probably um, tell people, especially kids my age, to never let anybody um, ruin what you believe in. A lot of people can get jealous of, you know, especially younger people going out and believing in themselves and doing what they want to do because they couldn't do it. I would just say, especially kids in the US, you know, you should not let other people cloud your own thoughts and opinions. You should do what you feel you can do. Um, that would be my message to people, you know, like keep That's believing. That's wonderful, it. yeah. Good <laughs> advice. And a real quick question. Where are you originally from or were you born in the United States or are you originally from somewhere else? I'm from Pakistan. And um, you've been in the United States how long? It would be five years. Five years. Yes, you have wonderful English. <laughs> well, you know, when you're doing literature on the bachelor's level, the last thing you want to hear is somebody like, oh, well, you could speak English, right? And you're kind of like, well, I put a lot more work into it than just knowing how to speak it. But yeah. Yeah, a lot of work does go into it. <laughs> Isn't she fun? And wasn't she delightful to look at? What a treat to have her on the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on Where Women Talk.